Let me ask you about about the latest news here that Hillary Clinton is not running for president. Are you surprised well, by this news? To me, I saw that and I said, well, that settles it. She's running. <laughs> That's true, because she's always honest and straightforward about these things. No, no, there's a beautiful play for her to be had here to be brought to this table reluctantly. I think Biden is going to prove himself. Listen, when Joe Biden is in his whiz-bang Cracker Jack, uh, you know, he could read Neil Kinnock without his half-glasses stage. He was a bit of a buffoon. And I think Bernie Sanders eventually, uh, I think some of the stuff's going to look disingenuous that you pen your treatise about uh, altruism from your third home. I think it might start <laughs> falling apart for kids, plus he's that old. I think that Elizabeth Warren, uh, I, I, I think she's quite frankly, a, uh, a disaster at this point, and I think they're going to find more stuff about her as she runs. I do think that Hillary will be the unlikeliest cavalry uh, waddling over the hill here <laughs> and coming in and, and, and saving them. And the play that she should make now is that I am only doing this because you begged me to come in, and this is an easy marker for somebody who toys with the truth like Hillary to come in two years out and say, I'm not running. It's the easiest play. I I think, to me, it's the first time I look at her and go, oh, she's finally got a brilliant kid running this campaign. Wow. All right. So that's interesting. So so you think it's kind of a fade movie. It's sort of a, it's a, it's a rope-a-dope. Hillary Hillary will run because she doesn't know how not to run. Yeah. And at this point, they're telling her, you are so far off the grid right now, you have to be brought to this, you can't come on your own. And the way to do that is to right now lay the marker. I'm not running. And then when they do go to her, in the you know the, the smokeless, smoky rooms now that run the Democratic Party, uh, she can at least say, "Well, I said I'll do it for the good of the party, damn it, but I can't. I didn't want to." <laughs> I guess it's Dennis Miller. By the way, not only can you see uh, his new special, Fake News, Real Jokes, on Amazon Prime now, but of course you should download his bi-weekly podcast, uh, the Dennis uh, Miller Option. On no, the... no, it's a trans weekly. It's it's not bi. It's uh, trans. Oh, oh, well, that's good to know. So what what is the what is the <laughs> podcast identifying as this week, or does it matter it used really? To be a podcast. Now it's a podless cast. <laughs> <laughs> get that at the westwood one podcast network i have not listened to this episode uh from a week ago uh and i'm sorry because i was at sea was busy but you talked about the, all this stuff about john wayne i know in southern california there's an airport in orange county they want to change the name from john wayne airport because this interview from 1970 came out and there was john wayne saying stuff that doesn't quite fit with our society today what do you make of that and is this something that we're gonna have to grapple with now that you know, things well, that... too many real-time things that are at the end of the world in liberals' minds are falling apart because they can be, quite frankly, uh, you know, they can be examined up close. So they've had to turn into grievance archaeologists <laughs> going way back and opening up uh, Puck Puck's tomb and finding things from the early 60s and then going back and trying to change airport names. They've run out of real-time heartbreak so now they have to go after john wayne once they get done with john wayne they're gonna get hey did you ever hear of this jefferson davis guy (laughs) how far are you gonna go back yeah there are people throughout history who held stupid opinions in stupid times there are also people who held stupid opinions in stupid times who happen to be the biggest box office star in the world if you really want to wake up on a day-to-day basis and go back and get his name rubbed out of airports, fine. But it's a superfluous gesture anyway, because as I understand it with the Democrats, air travel will be a thing of the past in 10 years. That's the point we've gotten to now, (laughs) where progressives are trying to rub out, eradicate things that essentially allowed us to step out from the other species on the planet Earth. Can I give... The wheel, a heads up. And fire, <laughs> you're not far behind. In the name of being progressive, they're going to start wiping out all the things that separated us from the lower forms of life on the planet. All right, there it is. Dennis Miller. De- you're still touring, aren't you, Dennis? I, I keep seeing you popping up in Pennsylvania and Texas. I went out with Mark Stein last weekend, and I can tell you, that uh, is an agile intellect. Yeah, right it there. is. Yeah, uh, it is. You know, we would do a Q&A at the end. If anybody sees any upcoming dates, I can tell you we hadn't worked before. So I sort of soft-pedaled the, oh, it's a great show, uh, because I didn't know if it was going to even be a good show. 
I'm not going to say great now, it's a little too chest pounding, but I can tell you we do around a 45 minute Q&A at the end, and I am amazed at the agility of that guy's intellect. Oh, yeah. And then I get to come on and just apply some sort of Borscht Belt coda to his long, thoughtful dissertations, and it's a pretty nice rhythm the show has. The Borscht Belt Coda, that was, was that your garage band back in the 70s? I think I you... was in an improv troupe oh, in was the that late was? 60s, taught by Harvey Lembeck's son, Michael, <laughs> in Santa Monica in a garage called the Borscht Belt Coda, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I tell you, my ex-wife actually did Lembeck's improv class for about six months. Well, and, that's, you can, you and, can say that there's some vermis... What is that word? Ver, vermissitude? Uh, Something resonates about that yes. uh, that reference. Every time you make that reference, I know that there's a narrow few, but we all know what you mean, and it's brilliant. Well, that's, that's the thing that has kept my career settled <laughs> firmly on the mean point. <laughs> the, when the arcane becomes the too specific, that's where I've made my stuff. Ah, and by the way, that's the name of his upcoming book, When the Arcane Meets the Too Specific. Uh, Dennis Miller, I would love to get you and Mark Stein coming out here to the Washington area. You will yeah, you would would kill too. here. I think, like I said, it's a good show, and I'm telling you, that is a smart guy. Yeah. Man. He knows, when he goes on about things in a serious manner, and he's pretty quick with a clip, too. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, that is a really... Uh, I don't know. It's it's like Noam Chomsky if he hadn't been hit in the head with a wrecking ball. <laughs> well, you're no schlep yourself. Dennis Miller, thanks for joining us, sir. Always good to all talk right, to you. Buddy. How's your family? You all good? They're great. Thank you for asking. Yours? Beautiful, baby. Happy to be alive, Larry O. I love it. I'll see you. That's Dennis Miller. Check out the new show, Dennis Miller, Fake News, Real Jokes, at Amazon Prime.